what other object can you think of that you could study history of people? Besides an apron, I can't think of anything. I had no intention of doing anything with an apron other than saving my grandmother's aprons. And I still don't think of myself as an apron collector. There's probably 2,200 thereabouts. And it changes all the time because we sell old ones, we sell new ones, and we're constantly getting them in. And I am planning on counting them by category. There'd be a lot of different categories. There's half aprons and bib aprons, or full aprons, and there's pinners, and there's aprons that have no, uh, I have one over there. The heyday of aprons was the 50s. That's when the aprons got fuller because they could afford more fabric. And the bells and things on old aprons, there's no hot glue. Everything's always stitched. In the 60s, they tapered out. At that point, they have aprons, but they're all alike. They're all made out of the same fabric. All the artistic quality of them is gone. And you'll see them on your way home. You'll stop somewhere to eat, and you're going to see aprons. They're just going to blend in. They're functional, um, but there's not anything unique about them. If I could be like the hidden camera, I'd want to go in the White House and see what the chefs are wearing. President Obama had an apron on one day. Of course, I wanted that picture of him and his apron. When I say aprons, it's a lot of art. It could be an art show just as well as a, as a textile show, a history. I'm Carolyn Terry from Iuka, Mississippi, and we're sitting in the only apron museum, uh, far as I know, in the world.